Hi everyone, Emily Teague here. Today we are outside of my studio and we're up on a rooftop in Brooklyn, New York. It's a really bright sunny day and today we're going to be talking about natural light. I've been shooting for about 10 years but only half that time has been spent shooting artificial lighting. For years I didn't feel comfortable shooting in studio and so I forced myself to do nothing but that. My background is actually in natural light and so today we're kind of taking a step back. Whether you start learning lighting in studio or you start learning it outdoors with natural light, I'm gonna give you some tips today that will hopefully help elevate your outdoor portrait work. I've got my friend Rachel helping model for us again today. She was in my last video on dramatic lighting in studio, so if you haven't seen that video yet, go check it out and you can see her there as well. Last thing I'll talk about before we dive right in is just my gear for anyone who's curious. As always, I'm shooting with my Canon 5D Mark IV and I'm pairing that with a 24 to 70 millimeter lens. I've got some V-flats from V-flat World that I'm gonna use today, and I've also got a standard run-of-the-mill reflector. So tip number one, find even shade. Currently, we are on a rooftop with no shade other than the scrim that's directly above me, so we're gonna run down to street level and find some shade down there. Okay, so as I was saying, tip number one is find even light. So there's this really tall building right here, and we went down here because if you look over here, we have a lot of direct sunlight. It's pretty harsh. It's about one o'clock. The sun is right up there. So if we have this building, it's going to block a little bit of that sun and create some nice shade. And so now just looking at Rachel, my model's face, we can see this light is nice and even on her. We do have a few shadows. If we look at her neck right here, there's a little bit of shadow cast from up here. If we look over over here you can see we've got some nice little highlights but everything's just really soft and subtle because of this even light coming down so let's take a shot and see how that's looking Okay, great, so a few things that I'm gonna talk about. One is my settings. Right now I'm at 320 for my shutter, 2.8 for my aperture, and ISO 100. And as I'm looking at this image, I see a few things. Number one, in the background, there's these orange construction cones, and even though I have a really wide aperture, I can still kind of see those, so as I'm positioning my framing, I'm gonna try to hide those with her face a little bit and just get them behind her head. Other than that, things are looking really good. I'm gonna have you Rachel, if you want to look towards the light, so we can see we have we have all this shade coming down from here. Even though it's this even, pretty neutral light, there's still more light coming from over here. We have a big open sky, and that's going to create some really nice catch lights in Rachel's eyes. So let's try this out. Beautiful deep breath, and exhale. And give me a little head tilt as well. Nice. And eyes towards the sky, down just a little bit. Right there, great. And look at me. Let's check that out. Beautiful. So that's looking really nice. So if she's facing directly towards me, I don't have a ton of those catch lights, but let's say, Rachel, turn with me here. Other way. Perfect, great, got it. And then look right at me. And now I'm getting a little bit more light into her eyes. Great, turn your shoulder a little bit towards me. Beautiful. And then why don't we try something kind of like this with your arm? Nice. And that's just creating some really nice lines. And then kind of look towards that wall over there. Chin down just a little bit. Beautiful. Let's have your fingers together a little bit. And then on your hip. Great, let's try that. Beautiful. Chin up just a little bit. One more. That looks great. Okay, so that is just a really easy way to get some reliable portraits, whether you are on a client shoot or it's a personal shoot, and you just wanna make sure that you've got some really clean, nice portraits. This kind of even lighting in the shade method is gonna help a lot. Tip number two, and I know this one sounds basic, but get a proper exposure. If you struggle with your settings at all, something that kind of helped me when I first began was thinking every shoot I'm going to start at 1 160th of a second, ISO 100, 
and F4, and I'm gonna go from there and take a test shot and adjust as needed. So ISO 100, I'm gonna start as low as I can because the more I raise that ISO, my image quality is gonna start to deteriorate a bit. For my shutter speed of 1 1 60th, I know I have really shaky hands, and so I don't wanna go slower than that because I might get some image shake in there. And then aperture uh, 4.0 or 2.8, anything wide open like that, I want a nice creamy background, so I don't wanna sacrifice that to get a darker image by raising that aperture. So after I've got those base settings, I'm gonna take a test shot and I'm gonna see how it looks. So let's say that the image is too light and I know that I want my aperture where it's at. I can't raise my ISO because it's already at 100 and if I raise it, that's just gonna make it even lighter. So my only option here is to crank my shutter speed and I can crank it as much and there's really not a lot of downside there. But let's say that I take an image and it's too dark. I know that I don't wanna go lower with my shutter speed, which would let more light in because then I'm gonna get that camera shake. And with my aperture, I let's say I'm at 2.8, so I don't wanna change that. So my only option there is I can raise my ISO. So take those test shots and then adjust as needed. Just remember what your priority is in the image. Tip number three is to find contrast in your background versus your model. So I've got Rachel with light skin. She's got this dark dress though. I'm gonna look around, I know that I've got this black background over here, so I'm gonna put her against that, and her skin against that black background should show with some really nice contrast. So Rachel, if you wanna head over there for me. Let's take a test shot. And actually, I'm gonna move you a little bit forward. Keep coming. And the reason that I'm moving her forward is I'm gonna create some separation between the background and her. So keep coming a little bit more. And let's see how that's looking. So first thing I noticed with this image is I'm overexposed because I do have that wide open aperture. So again, I'm gonna crank my shutter speed. Let's try 320. Let's have you look back at me. Turn your face just a little bit that way. Beautiful. That's really nice. Turn your shoulders towards me and then let's turn your chin over here. Beautiful. So I'm looking at this image and I'm really liking it, especially for my dramatic style of shooting. Her skin is light against this dark background and her dark hair and dress. So there's some really nice contrast in here. I'd prefer it if there was a little bit of light separating her hair from the background, but I know that there's enough information in this file that I can just bring that up a little bit. This next tip is kind of like 3.5 because it's a mix of three and four. So tip number three was creating contrast in our backgrounds. So I've moved Rachel where she is directly lit by this bright, bright sun, but behind her we have all this shadow. So I'm creating contrast with lighting for this one. And then tip four, which is related to it, is don't be afraid to use direct sunlight. So this is a lot brighter than I would normally go. It's some pretty hard light, but I think we're gonna create some pretty cool portraits with this. So I have cranked my shutter speed way up. My aperture is still at 2.8. My ISO is still at 100, but my shutter speed now is at 32,000. So let's take a shot and see how it looks. Beautiful. Keep moving. Do whatever you like. Yeah, it's new. Just started doing it these days. So I'm getting these lovely portraits. Again, my shutter is at 3,200. I think I said 32,000 earlier. 3200 for my shutter um, and it's looking really nice. She's properly exposed. We have this very dark dramatic background behind her because of this light difference. I'm pretty happy with it. So let's move on and we'll go to our next tip. Okay, so we're back up on the roof with tip number five, which is to experiment with backlighting. So we've got our sun, which it's probably about 4 p.m. So it's a, it's starting to go down in this direction. So I've got Rachel right here and you can see, Rachel, if you face towards me, right now we've got a split where there's like, there's light, there's shadow. So instead, let's have the sun behind you. And Rachel, if you wanna turn this way, Great, so now we've got her evenly lit. You can see there's a bunch of light on her hair. There's some light coming from behind. So let's see how this looks. I'm gonna kind of lean against this a little bit. Yep, beautiful. Let's see that. 
That's really nice. I'm gonna adjust my settings a little bit. Okay, so right now I'm at shutter 640, 1 640th of a second, ISO 100 and aperture 2.8. Let's try this out. Beautiful. That's looking really nice. So we've got more shadow on this side. So Rachel, try looking out there. Beautiful. Gorgeous. Eyes on me. And then keep your chin out there. And then eyes right about here. Slowly start turning your chin towards me. Right there, beautiful. And then eyes on me. Gorgeous. You can close your eyes if you need. And then let's open at the count of three. One, two, three. Beautiful, that's stunning. Great. So I love that we've got this really nice backlight on her hair and her face is evenly lit. I'm, I'm really happy with this. Tip number six is our last one is don't be afraid to modify light outside as well. So we just have a standard reflector with us right now. Alicia, who is my hair and makeup artist, is also I'm my assistant right now, which I'm grateful for. Alicia, if you want it bright, throw some light into her face. Wow, that's a lot. Let's take it away. <laughs> so for me, that's way too much. On the silver side, it's gonna create some really bright, contrasty light that I think is a little too much. So instead, to soften that, we're just gonna open this up. And we'll just use the white, and this will still bounce quite a bit of light into her face, but it won't be as harsh or contrasty. Let's try that and come pretty close. And then take it away. Great, and so watch her face. Bring it close. That's it right there, let's try that. And then, Rachel, if you wanna look right at me. Beautiful, and now we're also getting this really great catch light from this as well, it's pretty big. Alicia, if you wanna kinda of bring it over this way a little bit. Yep, let's try right there, great. And look at me, great. And so I'm watching this catch light. I don't like catch lights from underneath, but this is kind of at the side. It's about five o'clock, but this way we're getting some light back in as well. As always, I hope that those tips were helpful for you and that you learned something. If you did, let me know in the comment section below or just feel free to say hi. I love reading through the comment section and hearing what you have to say or meeting you for the first time. So I'll see you guys in the next video.